All right, guys, so um, a while ago I had posted about the um, setup uh, here that I, uh, the controller and everything I built here. <clears throat> so now, uh, since SO50 is about to make a pass, uh, this is Orbitron, and we're right at the edge of the footprint. Gonna be there in just a minute. I'm in the gray line there. Uh, we're using Wisp DDE to um, give the controller headings and also to control the frequency of the, oh, there it is, control the frequency of the radio. So how, how you set this up is, uh, you, there's a lot of setup involved, but you just click one, that's the uh, radio I have saved in here. And sometimes the elevation needle likes to bounce around. I haven't quite figured out why that is, but um, it is currently sending data to the radio. And so you can see here the Doppler on the sub receiver is set for 43681. Um, and this we have to set to the transmit frequency, um, which I believe is in memory. No, uh, I forget what it is actually. Luckily, it's here, 14585, okay? And that's narrow FM. Um, you can use regular FM if you just speak quietly. So, we're close here, 14585, right there, oh. okay? Um, oh, come on. There we go. So now I can't change it. Um, what? What? Oh. Uh, okay, see, when I, I made a mistake. When I clicked this as one, I should have clicked this one as one, because that adjusts the sub. See, the tone of the beep is different. I wasn't paying attention there. go now we're set properly and we can open the squelch and start recording here uh, the other thing we have to do before I do that is turn the controller to automatic mode and it blinks there to indicate that you have changed mode and it, it, it's blinking it's now receiving data it is now uh, turning the azimuth rotator to where it should be and then it will turn the elevation rotator. Um, this is, nothing's actually happening here. It's usually when this starts to move, the, the PWM buffer that holds this meter, uh, <laughs> or doesn't, uh, it kind of like gets confused a little bit. So as soon as this stops moving, it's, it is actually moving here. And it's pulsing to indicate that the, uh, the, root, the contacts are closing inside the rotator. One thing I might like to do is add to this uh, whether or not it's actually being told to turn as well as indication um, whether or not it's turning because you can get into a situation where this is turning but the, it's not actually pulsing it's just locked and other than this lighting up you'd have no other way to tell whether or not it's it's trying to move uh, so we'll open the squelch here and uh, start the recorder and this is being recorded from the uh, from the back of the radio, so the beeping and, and things that uh, happen here as a result of the frequency update uh, won't won't be present on that recording. And you can see the the bars, the level there is all the way up. That's because the you can get the audio from the back of the radio, but the caveat is that you have to do it at full volume. And since I'm recording this. I might not even make any contacts here. I just wanted to show you guys that it, that it works. I'm not hearing anything yet. Here it is.
something is off frequency a little bit, maybe. November 8 1, I got. Foxtrot November 22. So even though it is making changes, I can still, you know, do whatever I want. And then at the next change, it says, no, you should be here, and does it continually. Um, you can set how often that happens, and realistically, I mean, once every, like, minute would be okay. But I have it for, I think, once every 10 seconds. And it, just by listening to this, it sounds like it, it's a little bit ahead of itself or behind itself, rather. Uh, it's, it seems like, to me, it's telling uh, the radio that it, sh it should be a little bit higher in frequency. I've heard that guy before. Now, you can also just have it not do anything to the radio. It'll still point the antennas where they're supposed to go, um, and I can just turn this manually. And because... Um, Yeah, KM4 Lima Alpha Oscar. Had I worked then? Um, I want to say yes, but I'm not certain. Like, you, you get that, oh, that's like some, some interference of too many people trying to talk at once. Uh, what I was saying is, this has a satellite mode in which the transmit and receive frequencies can be um, changed simultaneously, or um, you can change the receive frequency and go back into sat mode and it will update what the transmit frequency is supposed to be but on this particular satellite since the pass band is wide enough we don't need to adjust the transmit frequency we can just let it adjust this and you see i can just change this manually and you know it's ju just like on an ht where you're doing it five kilohertz at a time or whatever you just kind of come over here and bump that down a little bit every so often and stay right on track And see, every so often here, uh, it, it, the, these, I mentioned before in the post that, uh, these rotators are, like, extremely overdutied for, for this setup. Um, they're not really made to turn this kind of stuff, but it's not as if they're turning continuously. I mean, they might turn a good bit, uh, when they first, when they first start moving the antennas, or if you go from where you are to park and the park happens to be zero zero actually the park is just with the lets it sit there but if you turn it back to zero zero you know it, it might move a bit but during operation they just they click they just kind of you know once every couple seconds it's not really a big deal so <clears throat> it appears that Everything's coming in pretty well uh, during the whole pass here. Now, see, this, this is this is moving the other way now. Um, it, it was up here. It went down here, and now it's moving back because uh, the satellite was up here. It came to here, so it kind of was tracking this way, and then it had to go this way for a second, and then you know it slowed down, and then it came past me, so it had to go woo, and you know really quick and follow it. It makes, it, it makes that noise. Woo. Um, so we're about, about in the middle here. And if you expand this window here, sorry. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, you can see 436788. See, we're a little high. And there it is. You don't have to be like super precise. Um, see. And it... Generally, it keeps it pretty well uh, in check. Uh, this this uh, video I just, just made here was the first time that I realized that uh, WISP DDE may tell it to be a little bit higher than it should be. Oops, sorry. I'm just doing this on my iPhone. I, 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 had, I had a GoPro that I was going to try, but it, it seems this is just a little bit easier to move around and to show you everything. and. The, a lot better picture, I think. 
Okay, now see, it's starting to fade a little bit. It's still pretty good. I'm gonna shut this off. I'm just do it myself. I tried to work this satellite on the field day, and oh my god, was it crowded. And, and all the, I tried another satellite, and it was like, I thought I wasn't making it because I wasn't hearing myself come back from the satellite, but I think that it was just so many people on there. And I did actually end up making a contact, which I was pretty happy about, on uh, SM50. Okay, so we still have a little bit of the pass left here. This was um, 73.7 degrees, and the, as, as you all know, uh, the, the, the closer it comes to you, the more, it's, the more over your head it is, uh, the longer the pass. And it gives you, of course, the, the pass here. Um, Orbitron, I guess, is a somewhat outdated program uh, in that it, it, I mean, I guess you, there's probably some way to upload uh, TLEs into it for like the most, the latest satellites, but this was pretty simple uh, to get to work. And I, I had used this before when I just did stuff by hand. And um, I had tried um, uh, Sat PC32, and I, I just wasn't, I couldn't get into it. I don't know if I, if I played around with it some more, I might like it, but this seems to be working fine uh, for now. There goes that white balance again. Yep. Seems to be fading a little bit. I tried working AO91 on field day, and, and that is one in which uh, you don't uh, you don't um, adjust the receive frequency; you just adjust the transmit frequency and leave, leave, leave the uh, uh, receive frequency alone. And <clears throat> I was having a hard time. I think it was just really crowded. But you know, when you adjust the receive frequency, at least you can tell whether or not you can hear other people. So you know, okay, well, if I hear somebody, I ought to make it. Um, but with AO91, I couldn't hear myself coming back. And, and, you know, like I said, you just leave the receive frequency alone. So I really had no idea uh, if I was making it or not. And I, I, I didn't end up making a contact on it. And I think we may have lost it here. We're still in the footprint here, but sometimes the lower, uh, lower when it kind of goes down below the horizon. So anyway, that's how that works. Um, I, I tell you a little bit about more about this controller. These um, meters here were um, uh, government surplus, I think. I forget the guy's name where I got them. I, I'll, I'll think of it as soon as I stop this recording. I'm sure, but they were government surplus. They are uh, zero to one DC uh, milliameters. Uh, zero to one milliamps DC equals full scale. And so they, they had, the reason that they have this like white uh, labels on here is because there are numbers behind there. You can see it if you look really close, just don't look too close. Um, so I had to, you know, cover those up with something and I didn't really want to paint them. So I thought, oh, I'll just cut up some label tape. And that, it looks pretty busy, but I mean, it's still completely readable. Um, these I think were from Radio Shack when the local one went out of business. These knobs, the switches and stuff, most of the other stuff I got from Mauser, including this switch, which is pretty cool. This is like a programmable um, switch. It has like a little keyway in the back of it where you can tell it how many poles you want it to have. I think, I, I forget the exact specifications, of course I can give you the part number, but um, I made it so it just has four uh, stops and this is like more label tape I put on here. The chassis, oh boy, where'd I get the chassis from? I think it may have been from DigiKey as well. This was, the chassis was the most expensive part of the whole thing. It was like a hundred bucks, but it looks, I, I like the look of it. Um, the front face is already painted white as is the back. Uh, so that made nice for the, the clear labels that went on here. Um, I just had some of these LEDs laying around. This big switch was from a steel mill. Uh, this would the, this would be like uh, if you have like a normal and maintenance mode for some equipment or relaying or something. That's what that would be for. 
uh, usually. It's just, it's a, it's like an industrial rated switch made by Alan Bradley. So obviously you don't have to use something like that, but that's just, that's what I had and I, you know, hey, this will work. So same thing with this Calibrate switch. This is just one from Radio Shack. Uh, let's see, I think that's everything. Um, you can, there is a calibration procedure. I'm gonna hold it this way now. Oh boy. Um, that you run through to, to start this here. So you start with power off, then you turn the calibrate switch to on. Um, and then you these manual pots fully clockwise, fully this way. Um, uh, and you flip the mode to manual and this, this walks the azimuth rotator back to zero. You set it to park. Um, you set the meters to full scale with the adjustment pots inside the controller. There's two on the, um, the board that's in there that set the full scale positions of these meters. So you set it to full scale, um, turn the power off, put the mode to auto, and then the next step here walks the elevator move, um, elevator elevation, excuse me, rotator back to zero. And this is what I was talking about, you know, is the only indication you have that this is moving is that this is flashing. So this is the situation in which, uh, you run into where this, you know, it's trying to turn that rotator, but there's not nothing happening with this LED. So that it might be nice to, you know, I don't see that it would ever get stuck, but it would just be nice to have an indication like, hey, it's trying to move and this isn't happening. Something is wrong, you know, and then you can, I mean, I'm pretty sure the rotator could handle it too. I mean, it's you know, locked, locked rotor current for a little bit, but um, then you set the mode to jog you wait for the meters to indicate zero, so they, they kind of stay here and then they just go back to zero. Um, then you turn both manual pots uh, counterclockwise. I made a mistake, I said I said counterclockwise. You turn them all the way this way to start with, and then you turn them back to zero uh, in this step. And then that's it. So the different modes here, automatic as you've seen, gets data from the computer. Jog is, is a mode in which these switches can be used. This one moves left and right. I'll hold it this way again. This one moves up and down. Uh, the software or the or firmware software code that is in this does not account for if you move both of these at the same time. I do not know what happens if you do that. So just don't do that. Um, you know, it's like you hurt your arm and you go to the doctor and if, if I move my arm like this, it hurts. And the doctor says, well, don't do that. That'll be $600. Um, so uh, if we move the elevation jog switch here down, I want to go back toward the other zero. As long as you hold it in, it keeps moving. You can just jog it once. You can go the other way. And there are kind of like soft limits in here program. So even if I continue to hold this, it just stops. It, it won't let you hurt it, um, provided that you set the position, you know, properly uh, with the, when you, that's the reason you calibrate it. Um, the manual, let's see here, I'll turn this one all the way up because as soon as I move this to manual, this, this is, these are gonna try to move to where these are. Uh, so I'll move this one like here. That's about there, you know. I, I don't want these to move, so I'm trying to set these knobs to where these are now. Uh, so you set manual, and I believe it moves the azimuth rotator first. Set it to manual. Oh, holy crap, what the hell is that doing? Okay, so it's it's moving. Okay, see, this is, this. I believe this is why that, see if I turn this, well, it, I believe this is why the meter moves around like that. It thinks that this zero is the same as this one, which it technically can be. Um, there's a little bit of playing around with the code that I had to had to do to prevent that from happening, but apparently something didn't work and it, it still thinks that this is the same as this. Now, okay, say so this is gonna move. It only moved a little bit, but see when I move this a little bit, it's gonna say, oh, he wants to go all the way back there and that's, where it's gonna go. Oh, maybe not. Okay, there it is. No? Yeah, see, now it's gonna go all the way back. Um, anyway, I think uh, I had to just change some numbers around in there. I, I thought I had fixed that. I think um, it 
also relies upon the PWM circuit inside there to, to set the position of these, uh, of the meters as well as the knobs. So it, it doesn't actually know what the position of it is. Oh my God, what is happening? Oh, this is really strange. I, I think what happened was I stopped here and then it said, Ooh, you want to move like almost all the way to zero. So it did. And then I stopped moving it. So it, it went there. And then when I turned it back to here, now it thinks that that is here. Um, See, now, now that this is moving, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to let me do anything until it completes what it's doing. And that, yeah, I really have, that's really goofy. I have to figure that out. Um, so when, when you turn this a little bit, see, I just gave it a little turn. You can move it like a couple degrees at a time. Now this meter moves in relation to what I'm doing with this knob, but the rotator doesn't actually do anything until I stop for a number of seconds. You know, I can stop for like a second and move it again and it still doesn't do anything um, and it, it's it only goes to like the nearest five degrees so it looks as though right there I happen to stop it exactly where it already was so I can just move it a little bit and then it'll move like one click or two clicks you know whatever so that's just kind of positioning it exactly where you want you know if you knew you wanted to move it south you could just say oh I'll just turn it to 180 and stop and then it'll go from where it is to it, as close as it can get to south. And sometimes that's dead on, sometimes it's not. Um, but that's what you get for the simplicity of, of uh, relative versus absolute positioning. Um, I think that's everything. I, I really, I, that, I've been experiencing that bouncing there from day one. Uh, and I don't really, I haven't, re it hasn't bothered me enough to really figure out what it is. Um, I think the only other component I didn't cover is this LED here. This is very bright. Um, I even put some white electrical tape over this. I, I think the, the camera makes it seem, you know, brighter than it is. Uh, but th I think I, I also got this from Radio Shack. Um, and then this, this guy here, the Rig Blaster, uh, both controls what the, um, it, it controls the frequency of the radio and allows for digital modes and stuff. This box here is a, um, this is a uh, DB9, serial a serial port it has three serial ports on the back so it allows you to plug a computer into it and transfer you know like do you want the computer to go to this device or this device device a or b what i did was took it apart and just used the switch that's in here it's like a it's like a nine position or tw uh yeah actually uh how many nine positions i think so a nine pole two position switch or nine position two pole switch uh, and I just put microphone, uh, like eight pin connectors on the back. So that allows me to connect this microphone to here and I can switch the, both the microphone and the PTT between this radio and this radio or Kenwood, uh, TS 950. Um, so that way I can have the one microphone on the boom here and I don't have to worry about, you know, it's not on the desk and I can, you know, I don't have to have two mics. I can just have one and it plugs in each here. And I just remembered that this is still going. <laughs> that's never happened before. That happens like every time I come back. Oh crap, that's still going. Um, and our, our Diamond uh, GZ Victor 4000, a 40 amp continuous power supply. Um, and the SP31, which, and now, see, when I'm usually running these, uh, satellite, uh, passes, I, I don't, I do not, um, let the audio come out of the speaker. I'm usually using headphones because when you do the, the full duplex, you have to do that. Otherwise it'll, uh, it'll squeal at the, at the, uh, the satellite and people are not too fond of that. Um, I guess I could show you the sat mode on this just for fun. Um, I believe you have to be not in memory mode. Uh, main. Okay, so we're not in memory mode. So we do function sat, and then this. I think yeah, there's they're the same. But you, what you do is you take the transmit frequency and receive frequency, like when there's no Doppler shift, so like when it's right over your head, you know, whatever the published the, the nominal values are, are, and you add them together. And then you'd store that number in one of these, not regular memory, but satellite memory. So I hit F sat. I pick the one I want by rotating this. 
And this, the, I, I really think the VFO is really cool in here. Um, if I just hit clear, this is freewheeling now, but if you do something that requires discrete steps, it has a little solenoid that click makes it click. So it, it clicks now, which is kind of interesting. Instead of having a knob like this one, a BFO memory channel knob, that's a separate click. It kind of uses the same BFO, which I always thought was cool. Anyway, um, F sat, and then we pick this one, and I hit sat again. That picks it, okay? So now, I'm, I think actually you're supposed to pick the sub. Uh, no. Hmm. No, you gotta be in main F set. That, okay. Um, the sub has to be not, yeah, there we go, okay. So now, when I change the, it's like 436.795 is the receive frequency. So if I change that and I come out of sat, I'm, 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 I am out of sat mode. If I go back into sat mode, yeah, see that adjusts the transmit frequency. And then if I, if I do it again, if I, I'm in sat mode, I change this, I come out of sat mode, then go back in. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's right. It adjusts the transmit frequency. And so if I change that again. Now see what, that's weird that that's changing like that. Anyway, uh, you can also, when you hold sat mode down, you can rotate this and both of these move together. I ha I'm not sure why that's changing like that. I'll have to figure that out. But anyway, I don't use that. Um, I just let the computer do the work, and this is really, this is going to drive me nuts. i got to figure that out. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.